What are we queuing for? Uh, Santa Croque. Santa Croque. Oh, is it Santa Croque? I think it's Croque. I'm sure he said Santa Croque when he said... Santa Croque. You recommended it, I might be wrong. It's, um, it's where Galileo and Michelangelo is buried. So okay. we're going to go and see and some... He said it was a must see. We'll find out. I'm not sure who the statue is in front of the cathedral though. Me neither. Um, but we'll see when we get in there. And uh, we are wearing shorts. So they might not let us in without buying a dress. So we'll see. <laughs> That'll be you. It says at the door that you have to wear... Um, Long clothes. Long clothes. You have to wear respectful clothes and wear shorts and t-shirts, so it might be a bit awkward, but we'll see. What are we looking at? We're at the entrance at the minute. Entrance is here. Ingress, entrance. So yeah. entrance is here, we're... So we've come in this way and then we've turned left. So what's on 28? Of the turned line. Joseph Pompey? That's creepy. Oh. That's really creepy. Galileo. Amazing. He's got his little globe there, look. So Galileo uh, discovered uh, the moons of Saturn. Uh, the four moons, and they call them the Galilean moons because they're the four biggest moons of Saturn. And he was uh, basically an amazing astronomer. He says there on his tomb as well. Uh, astronomer, geometrical philosopher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on this side you've got art, on the other side you've got science. It's beautiful. So his name is actually Michael Michele Angelo. You can call him Michelangelo, but Michele Angelo Bonarocio. Yeah. I know those ones. <laughs> I wonder if he sculpted his own tomb. Did, did you know he was going to die? That's the question. See how the painting goes up above him as well. Almost joins in with the architecture. This is Dante's tomb. And, uh, so he's not buried here, he's buried in Ravenna and they really hated him. They really hated him because he kept turning them down and every time he turned them down to come back to Florence uh, they punished him more and more so they put his kids in jail, they banished his kids, they did everything to him. And then in the 2000s they were like maybe we should forgive him and then they made this monument for him. Which is actually, is it says that where he's buried but it's not. <coughs> it's almost kind of like Florence officially apologising, I guess, for the way they treated him. But this is uh, his fake grave in Florence. On the left, I'm not sure who the statue is. Um, it doesn't give me detail. Star on the head. We'll have to come back to that and find out who that is. Um, the star on the head and the staff and then on the right hand side we've got someone with a reef could be it looks like a woman right could be yeah, could, could be beatrice from the comedy could be his wife and we'll translate this at the bottom as well at some point it's 
It's an honorary tomb. Not that he would have wanted it. He would have been really pissed off that they did this. Really, like he was a grumpy old man and this would have really pissed him off. The statue that we didn't know what it was from the other side actually turned out to be Dante. Um, and he's there with an eagle for some reason. I'm assuming this is to do with the crazy acid trip he has in Paradiso where he imagines an eagle talking to him made out of angels. But yeah, it's Dante. It's a massive statue. I don't know if you would have appreciated this either. But, you know, it's always nice to be proven right. It is, it's massive. I'm not sure what the eagle is. Yeah. The only eagle I know of that he wrote about was the one in Paradiso. There's one in Paradiso that's made out of angels. It's probably a symbol for something else. Same as the lions. <clears throat> but it's a symbol of Rome as well, the eagle. Yeah. It's the same age. That one says El Covid. Covid. But Romulus and Remus are sucking from the wolf. Ogmore something. Dante didn't write in Latin, so it's got to be in Italian, even if it's an old version of Italian. Ogmaligri Glio Oreo. The eagle again. Maybe a symbol? This is family crest maybe? It's quite a lot with towers on. So look that up. There's a, a ram there as well with a crown. And finally. There's an eagle there with a crown as well. Um, I can't make that out. Un, un vich, nuovosa, nuovosa. No idea. Again, the eagle, we've got a Bison, I think, and a tree. Plenty of crosses. One of these has got to be Dante's symbol, got to be his family crest. I'll just play marble on the outside. There he is. Part of the reason why we're here. On your right. On your right. Three and four.
Got the clay, where are we? Bologna. Bologna. And what are we doing? Getting a train to Ravenna. Okay. It's lovely and warm this morning. It is. It's much that's warmer it. here than in Venice. That must be our train coming in. It's got the old rackety thing compared yeah. to the other ones. Yeah, on. the first class hyper trains that go like 200 miles an hour. It's still for an hour to get to Ravenna. Yeah. Yeah. We leave at five past eleven, so yeah. I don't know if they might have issues with the skirt, but we'll see. If not, it'll just mean that you'll have to go in and I'll send But I, from what your mum said, it doesn't sound like it's banned. No, like it's, there's someone there, like... It's a grave, so... Checking who's going in and out, kind of thing. It's just a really fancy grave. Yeah. So, I can't imagine the only time it would be a problem is if there's someone there to tend you away. It's going to be cool though. You said it's only about 10 minutes from the train station. Yeah, 10 minute walk. Our train from Bologna to Ravenna. And then um, get some footage. If I'm allowed to record. Which I should be, because there's photos of people all over the place. It's one of those things you don't really know until you get there. Yeah. espresso we had but I don't know if I can have it 20 times a day like some people I, seem to have. I honestly don't know how the Italians drink espresso. Yeah like yeah yeah. Because it's so strong. Yeah. 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 I think the, the city's on the right. Just follow the signs of the exit first. Yeah. Oh yeah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to grab? I'm gonna grab your map and we can see where we're going. I'm pretty sure it's just straight down there and then left. But we'll see. This guy here? Mm. No idea. Ravenna. 12.19 p.m. Italian people can't drive. It's just nice that you let us go. Let Thank us you. Go. Just uh, if there's any Italians, I guess, that end up watching this. <laughs> I apologise, but you really can't drive. <laughs> to be fair, it might be a bit better here because it's a smaller town. I mean, when we first got into Naples, what was it? Two heart attacks in the taxi. <laughs> I was talking to the Italian guy on Imager <laughs> and he was like, yeah, Naples just, just he will just do what they want. And he was like, Naples people, they aren't drivers, they just don't have licenses. And then we were like, oh, so they must be better in Rome. And then no, no, no way. What's amazing about this place is um, as much as Dante talks about Florence, 
This is where he wrote the comedy. Oh really? This is where he wrote it, ah. yeah. Ah. He's on a... See, I just assumed some... Florence. Oh, is Florence where he was originally from? Florence is where he was from. Ah. And they got rid of him because they... Because they didn't, they didn't like what, they didn't like what he was preaching. So he preached it somewhere else in a really <laughs> dramatic kind of Christian language way. Uh, What's that? What's that building? That's got Dante in it. Something Dante Alighieri. That's interesting. Stop freaking out, Satnav. Yeah, say, say it's a museum. I don't know what it is because it won't let me go into it. The chill. Oh, there we go. Come on. Liceo. I don't know what a Liceo is. I don't. High school. Oh, that's a school. Imagine yeah, going to a... Imagine, imagine going to a school called Dante Alighieri. It would be cool to have school trips here though. Yeah. This text that everyone in Italy has to learn. This is where he's buried. Uh -huh. It's just over there. All right, are we straight still? Straight, yep. Yeah. I have to say, even though I've just dissed Italian drivers, Ravenna drivers much nicer. It's in lots of bookstores. They must be keen readers. Hmm. It'd be cool to get a copy of the comedy around here. Being, like, yeah. a, like a hardback. Italian, it would be, would it be awesome? <laughs> Bought it from the source. This is where the wellspring of the inferno comes from. Are you sure? That looks like it there. Can you see it? End of the street. Check this out and have a coffee. Yeah? You'll probably see the um, the difference in grandeur as well between this one and the and the fake one in um, in Florence. You know the one that was in that church or the bas basilica. Well, they were trying to make it up to him, weren't they? Do you imagine like you've been? thrown out of your city that you love and then Dante. and 500 years later they're like yeah but you know I'm going to make a statue of you because you were one of the greats like, but no because you threw me out what the hell mm -hmm. the tomb of Dante Dante Alighieri Street with this you notice the mosaics on every street sign. That woman was just saying how this place is friends for me. Mm. Well, this is awesome. There's a mosaic of him there, look, on the wall. Oh, Dante. That's cool. Okay. Take care, man. This is where he is. This is the dude. <laughs> Virtue and honor. So the tomb says on it something like, um, uh, here, here I lie, the uh, flown from the. Shall I see if I can do a. I've tried before. I think it's something like flown from the, the land that bore me. Because of because of Florence, mother of little love. And we've got the candle burning. Look. And it burns all the time. And Florence donates money to keep the candle burning. We're in his study. It's amazing. This is where he's really buried. This is the real one. This is not the fake one. 
nice little tent. It is, and, it's, and the frescoes were repainted after World War II. You had two. Yeah, 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 it's cool. See the picture above the thing? Okay. Dante's tomb was built in 1780 by the Ravenna architect Camillo Morbrigia, Morbrigia at the behest of Cardinal Legate Luigi Valenti Gon Gonzaga, whose coat of arms is above the entrance. Okay, <laughs> so that's, that's his. Uh, the temple stands on the site of an early 15th century bu building commissioned by the Lord Venetian, by the Venetian Podesta Bernardo Bembi which replaced the original votive chapel built for Guido Novella da Polenta, Lord of Ravenna, after Dante's death on the night of the 13th to the 14th of September, 1321. The interior houses a sarcophagus containing Dante's bones. The Latin epitaph carved on the front was written in 1327 by the poet Bernardo Canaccio. The base relief of Dante above the sarcophagus was sculpted by Pietro Lombardo in 1483. In 1519, when Pope Leo X authorised the transfer of the poet's bones to Florence, the monks of nearby Franciscan monks monastery stole them away and kept them hidden for centuries. They were rediscovered by chance in 1865 and placed in the sarcophagus where they still remain. The bronze and silver garland at the foot of the sarcophagus was donated in 1921 to commemorate the 6th century poet, centenary of the poet's death. Uh, on its right is placed the votive refined ampule made of the Trieste sculptor Giovanni Meyer and offered in 1908 to the, by the municipality of Trieste. The lamp hanging from the vaulted ceiling burns olive oil from the Tuscan hills, which is offered every September by the municipality of Florence. Next to the poet's tomb, behind a wrought iron fence dating 1921, made by the Venetian Umberto Bellotto, we have the Quadrato di Bracciaforte, an ancient oratory once linked to the Church of San Francesco by a porto that has not survived. The two 5th century marble sarcophagus in the quadrangle were used by the Pignata, Pignata, Pignata? and Traversari families of Ravenna. In the adjacent garden with its bay, laurel trees and ivory covered mount marks the place where the poet's bones were buried for safekeeping during the Second World War. Every evening at dusk, the bell of the tower, a gift from the municipalities of Italy, rings 13 chimes recalling the opening tenets of the 8th canto of the Purgatory. It was by now the hour that turns to home, the longing thoughts of seamen, melting hearts the day they said goodbye to dearest friends, and when that by love the pilgrim, new to this, is pierced to hear far off the evening bell that seems to mourn the dying of the day. Amazing. So there's a mound in here somewhere where his bones were buried in World War II. Cool. Dante was buried here in 1944 to 1945. So you didn't get very far then. Yeah. Well, that's probably why they put that there, because they've been secretly kept right next to it. Yeah. To be fair. And that must be the bell that rings for 13 chimes. Oh, there's another one here. I'll have to translate that when we see that. Maybe that was his original tomb? The one that they stole the bones from? It's got like a key on it. Yeah. Or maybe it's where they store the bones at night or something, or... I don't know. You wonder how many kind of great poets have died and we've lost their remains. One of them is famous as Dante. Well, you've got like Homer and... they do for Shakespeare in England. Yeah. But do we know where Shakespeare's buried? You see that? I don't think his head was that real big in real life, if I'm honest. Or was he <laughs> that kind of beetroot red that... Sure. You have, you have to have hot Dante. Can you see how hot he is? Dante plus. His nose was not that straight, I can tell you that. For it's a fact. They've made it look like he's not got a, <laughs> a big nose. I wonder what this is. 
Dante Plus. Hot, sexy Dante. I'm sure I would have appreciated that. All right. Coffee duty done. No, it was a nice coffee. It was a nice coffee, yeah. We Macchiato. Know now if we want to make our own for the espresso. Macchiato. Clearly. See you later, Dante. Maestro, master, mentor. I bet there's plenty of Madonna and Charles in there. About 600 more. Yeah. I'm tempted to uh, create, <laughs> create a gallery on Imgur of just all of the Madonna and Childs that I've taken pictures of. It'll probably take you about two hours There's long. There's probably a hundred, hundred or so photos. Dante Street. Cool. Awesome. I wonder if he's got a statue in that square. No, 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 we walked past, we walked past all those little ones, right? We did come out this way. Oh, did we go all the way? Yeah. We check out these statues before we... Got like 30 minutes or so. They look like cardinals more than anything. I don't think any of these are a statue of him. First place I've seen. Hmm. Like like somebody put of, somebody being pulled from hell. It's very cool. Let's go and get a copy in Italian, preferably in hardback. Come back here though, it's nice, it's a nice town. I bet it'd be nice to come for like a weekend if it was part of a weekend. Just to relax and chill out. Seems like there's quite a few of like Americans here. Yeah. It's quite um, more touristy than I expected. I thought it was going to be like a little quiet town. It's nice though, the drivers aren't nuts. Highlight? Mm -hmm. Highlight? Mm -hmm. Highlight? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not the coffee? No. Coffee's coffee. After you had one Italian coffee, you had one. Yeah, but it was different. We had a macchiato. Yeah. Still. Yeah. What did you think of Sexy Dante? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> was, was you expecting Sexy Dante? I wasn't expecting Sexy Dante. <laughs> May, may have gone a bit nuts as well with the purchasing of books. Yeah. That's nothing new. It means that you get you get to have a nice 60 euro present for yourself now as well, right? Yeah, back to Bologna. That was cool. Um, Quick flying visit. Ravenna's a lot nicer than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be very quiet, very really small. But seems like it's quite a common place for people to visit. It felt, it's a recommended place. It felt almost like a mini Florence. Yeah, yeah. I would probably agree with that. Same, yeah, maybe same. not quite as arty as Florence. Yeah, like yeah. Similar, kind of similar kind of feeling to it. Yeah. I can understand why you would want to come here if it was like that back in those times. If you left, if you left Florence, you think you'd come here for a reason, and maybe that was why, because it was about similar, yeah, similar, maybe. similar feel to it, similar people. Who knows? Yep, yeah, that's what I know. You've seen both of his tombs now. Which which was better? Which was which was the better tomb? Yeah, yeah. You can tell. You can tell it's where all the money went. Right. That statue of him was massive as well. It's about five times bigger than a person. Um, but yeah, his tomb in Florence was marble carved. I wonder if that's. I wonder if that's where they intended his bones to go. You know, when they tried to take him back to Florence. Yeah. Yeah. 
I would have thought so. Because they only forgave him like in 2009, like officially, and that looks a lot older than 10 years. Who knows? Forest was nicer, Ravenna was more real. It was a place where he is buried. It was a lot more um, humble, I guess. It's more of a humble grave. Yeah, but if you notice that they had that, but then they've clearly commercialised it because there was like the Dante Museum next to it and something else Dante. I think he would have he would have been okay with that though in Ravenna, maybe. Um, I think the thing is as well, like you know, in in, in uh, Paradiso, a lot of the the saints that he meets in Paradiso in his uh, heaven work, talking about how being poor is the best in the world, being poor and being charitable is the best. So the idea that he's got this big fancy marble monument probably cost a fortune to make in one of the biggest churches in Florence. I don't know if you would have you would have gone for that. So maybe the kind of more humble, basically like a, a tiny little shack was something you prefer, but who knows? Go back yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool if you could talk to him now, right? Bring him into modern day, what do you think of Florence now? You might think it's even worse. Probably. Well, like you say, I'll be pissed off that they're using him to commercialise His image, right? Yeah. Um, but then they might be happy that the Vatican separated or he might not. I don't know what you think of modern politics. Yeah. Like if Shakespeare was alive today to see people performing Hamlet, and they'd be like, "That's not. This has been changed significantly yeah. since my original work. <laughs> like been translated and translated so many times that like Chinese whispers is just kind of it's changed." Yeah. You don't, well, it's like the audience wouldn't respond to an original version. Yeah. It's like it's like first edition of books though, like second edition they refine stuff, they change little bits, they reword things. And you wonder how over six hundred years that might have changed for Yeah. Who knows? I wonder if there's any first edition Infernos left in the world. If there's any original copies of Inferno still scattered around. Probably, but they're probably in. Museums, right? Yeah. We're worth a fortune. We're worth like hundreds of millions.